Dobro jutro, drage dame, cenjeni gospodje, lijep pozdrav na tretjem dnevu, dnevo slovenskega turizma na slovenskem turističnem forumu. Moje ime je Matej Golob, sem del ekipe, ki je organizirala in pelje paralelni program v Kranski gori v kompasu Hekatonu, v katerem boste danes še kar nekaj slišali v nadaljevanju. Da ne bomo preveč na začetku dela prevelikega voda, bi za uvodne besede na odar povabil dve dami, najprej Majo Pak, direktorco Slovenske turistične organizacije. Majo. Kolegi, kolegice, lepo pozdravljeni na 20. jubilejnem slovenskem turističnem forumu, tukaj v okviru sedmih, torej dnevo slovenskega turizma. Vesela sem, da bomo skupaj tukaj na tej čudoviti lokaciji v planici, tudi danes inspirirani v razmišljanju o izzivih, ki smo jih skupaj zastavili in obljubljam, da bo kmalo topleje. Verjamem, da so vas včerajšnja predavanja in diskusije spodbudile k razmišljanju o novih, inovativnih turističnih produktih, višje dodane vrednosti, kar pa je letos tudi tema dnevo slovenskega turizma. Ni dvoma, da smo v slovenskem turizmu lahko upravičeno ponosni na prehojeno pot v teh zadnjih letih, vendar pred nami so novi izzivi, nove aktivnosti. Zavedamo se, da so cilji zapisani v novi strategiji, ki smo jo skupaj pripravljali, zelo ambiciozni. Želimo 4 milijarde evrov v naslednjih petih letih. Vemo pa tudi, da so turisti vedno bolj zahtevni, želijo si edinstvenih, doživeti, inovativnih produktov, autentičnih zgodb. Seveda si ob tem vsi v slovenskem turizmu postavljamo vprašanje, kako oblikovati nove zgodbe, kako inovativne turistične produkte, više dodane vrednosti za 365 dni v letu, za vse štiri letne čase v vseh štirih makrodestinacijah. No in odgovore na vsa ta vprašanja bomo poskušali najti na današnjem slovenskem turističnem forumu s številnimi oglednimi gosti Slovenije, Stojine, in pa tudi pri rezultatih prvega vseslovenskega turističnega hekatona, ki še poteka. Dragi udeleženci, udeleženke Slovenskega turističnega foruma, vabim vas vse k drznemu razmišljanju, predvsem pa k aktivnemu vključevanju današnje dogajanje in pa seveda k sodelovanju pri promociji in drženju slovenskega turizma. Naj nas ogledni predavatelji, strokovnjaki popeljajo do kreativnih idej, inovativnih konceptov in uspešnih zgod. Hvala in lep dan tukaj v planici pod poncami. Hvala lepa, Maja. Drugi kratek uvodni nagovor pa bo v strani Eve Štraus podlogar državne sekretarke na Ministrstvu za gospodarstvo. Dobro jutro, spoštovane kolegice, kolegi, spoštovani prijatelji. Mislim, da so letošnji dnevi slovenske turizma pokazali to, kar med letom čutimo, pa nam včasih zmanjka nekak časa, da si zavedamo teh občutkov. Kako v turizmu vseeno res smo povezani, da tudi to, da smo ena velika družina, ni samo fraza, ampak da dejansko to smo drug drugemu, in da je to edini način, da lahko uspešno in na pravi način tako promoviramo Slovenijo, kot seveda naredimo pravi vtis na naše goste in jih z tudi svojim odnosom do njih in do naše ljube Slovenije pripravimo, da se tudi v Slovenijo še večkrat vrnejo. Ne glede na to, da zdaj le temperatura je taka lepo gorenska tukaj v tem prostoru, Vremite mi, da ko bo prvi govornik, gospod Siniša Topolovič, nam nalil čistega vina in naših izzivov, nam bo vsem postalo zelo vroče in bomo videli, koliko še skupnih izzivov imamo v prihodnje. Šport, kultura, turizem, vse to se je v zadnjih treh dneh tako lepo res prepletalo, da ni dvoma, da tudi v leto, ko vstopamo, ko bo povdarek na kulturi, na številnih izjemnih športnih dogodkih, 
da bomo v slovenskem turizmu to znali izkoristiti. In mislim, da dejansko ta lokacija v dolini pod Poncami, da nam daje tisto energijo in pravzaprav zavedanje, kaj pomeni imeti vizijo, kaj pomeni imeti pogum in seveda potem tudi znanje, samokritičnost, odločnost in pa smisel za povezovanje in za timsko delo, da potem lahko dosežemo svoje zastavljene cilje. Torej, užitek je biti tukaj z vami. Veselim se nadaljnih mesecev in upam, da let, ko bomo so ustvarjali slovenski turizem na osnovi strategije, ki smo jo vsi skupaj sprejeli v zadnjih mesecih. Torej, Slovenija je zelena aktivna zdrava za pet zvezdična doživetja. Zato, da nam to uspe, moramo biti tudi pet zvezdični gostitelji, v kar pa nad vomem, da bomo, da smo in da smo se pripravljeni v to smer tudi še naprej razvijati. Hvala. Hvala lepa. Kot je bilo že napovedano, sledi prvo predavanje. Tale mikrofon mi bosta dala dol. Siniša Topaloviča, ki je managing partner pri podjetju Horvat HTL. Na livu nam bo malo čistega vina, to je bilo napovedano, naredo bo malo primerjavo turističnega trga Slovenije, Hrvaške, Avstrije, pa kot rečeno malo čistega vina. Siniša, stage is yours. Hvala. So, dobro jutro svima. I've been told to speak in English, so I will switch to English. So, thank you very much for being here early morning after yesterday's fun evening. It was a real pleasure to see so many of you having great fun. But in order to know where we want to go, first of all, we need to know standing at the moment. So, uh, when, I was, when I was asked to prepare the presentation, I was told that we should prepare um, objectivized picture of Slovenian tourism, focusing on challenges that are ahead of us. So starting with starting with with a sector as we see it over the last few years, we can see that only until 2014 Slovenian tourism was standing at one place. We see that there was no major development of overnights from 9.3 million to 9.6 million until 2014. Um, only over the last two years we can see that there is significant increase of, of tourism traffics uh, but still below double-digit growth. Only in this year Slovenian tourism will re record a double-digit growth and this coincides actually with a global shift in tourism demand. A lot of Mediterranean destinations disappearing temporarily from the market, being Egypt, being Tunisia, being Morocco for some time but also during last year Turkey. So um, all of this is actually positively influencing Slovenian tourism. So what we see today is not results dominantly, let's say, induced by development of the industry, but actually more on the side of the demand. Um, cons consistently with, with increase of the total volumes, we can see also that there is the increase of the total revenues, which is okay because revenues are, are growing comparably to the growth rates of, of the tourism volumes. So all in all, yeah, this is fine. But guess what? It's also happening on the regional level as well. Majority, or let's say even all countries in your neighborhoods, um, have been growing over the last uh, six years. So we can see that Slovenia is actually somewhere in the middle with a little bit less than 4% annual growth uh, on average from 2012 to 2016. Um, but there are also other countries like Hungary, like Croatia, that have grown almost 6% on average annually at the same period of, of time. And Italy, being an extremely huge country and extremely powerful in terms of tourism traffic, has grown um, a little bit le more, less than 1.5%. Uh, so, yes, the region is flourishing, Slovenia is growing, but Slovenia is not capitalizing on its position. So, what we see here is actually the total expenditure per international overnight measured by US dollars. 
So as you can see, compared to some peer countries that, that we have selected, um, Slovenia is better only from compared to Croatia, but much more lagging compared to Austria, compared to Italy, compared to Greece, if you will. So speaking of this, we are speaking that from one side, you are increasing the to total volumes, but at the same time, you're really not utilizing in financial terms what you really could do from the, from the current volumes of, of the business, right? Moreover, we can see that compared to, let's say, 2012, in 2016, there is the absolute decrease of average uh, expenditure in euro per arrival. So um, the total decrease is a little bit less than 40 euros. Um, and obviously, as you can see, this is more than 100 million euros of lost, lost revenues. If Slovenian tourism was able to keep uh, expenditures on this level as of 2012. So we can see that actually, yes, we are growing in terms of total numbers, but at the same time, we are in the position that we earn a little bit less with every international arrival that Slovenia gets. And this is consistent and stabi sta stable and um, relatively strict and strong trend. So it's not volatile from year to year. Um, but the good thing in, in all of this is that actually there is a really strong tourism upside potential. We can see um, compared Slovenia with the uh, regional countries that there is significant possibility to grow in terms of overnight. So Slovenia is um, at 5.4 uh, overnights per resident while peer countries in the region are above 12 overnights. So we see the upside potential of at least 2.5 percent, uh, 2.5 times here. But the same goes for hotel rooms per square kilometer. So we can see that Slovenian tourism is still under hotelized. So there is huge upside potential for the hotel development in Slovenia being at the moment more than three times compared to what Slovenia has now. Um, but speaking of hospitality industry, um, money makes world go round. So in hospitality industry is the same. So um, speaking of how much hospitality industry is making money and um, yeah, at that stage we come actually to the situation when we compare Slovenia to regional countries and we can see that there is a gap in terms of ADR of a little bit less than 25%. So actually we are speaking about 23% lower ADR compared to ADR that is being achieved by average regional hotel in the Southeast and Central Europe. So looking at this, when you compare 90 euros on the average and Slovenian 69 euros, yeah, it's a significant gap. So hotels are not pricing, not achieving the price, not even on the regional average of, of this area. Speaking about hotel occupancy rates, so from one side, yes, we have ADRs, we have average daily room. On the other side, we have the occupancy levels of the hotels. So a regional average occupancy hotel level is 51%, um, actually 52%. Slovenia is around the average, uh, but still with huge and significant growth, uh, growth potential. Um, but when we combine ADRs and occupancy, we come to revenue per available room, which is the ultimate, um, the ultimate business KPI for hotel industry. And analyzing and comparing Slovenia, which is this orange dot, uh, orange dotted line, um, based on this KPI, we can see that Slovenia is almost 40% underachieving compared to the regional averages. So hotels are, let's say, 40% less making money per hotel key than this is done in, in uh, compared to average of Italy, Croatia, uh, Austria, Hungary, and uh, those countries that you can see below. So this is quite disturbing 
for any hotel industry uh, because lagging behind from regional competitors by 40% is, is really a um, strategic issue of the sector. And this was actually particularly analyzed during our strategic uh, strategy development process with the Ministry of, of, of Economy and with STO. And the main leverages that we were pre uh, proposing in the strategy were actually focusing on how to bridge that gap. Um, moreover, yeah, this is, this is aside from the industry. So ADR's occupancy and RevPAS is something that is industry taking care of. But looking at the market, um, when we see how market perceives Slovenia, um, we have analyzed a um, huge number of hotels in Slovenia and how they perform in terms of um, comments and reviews on the booking.com. So not TripAdvisor, which is more um, subjective, you can pay on TripAdvisor to have better reviews, but on booking.com it's, it's related to the real reservation and real guest. So we take this as more reliable source. So when we analyzed, I think it was around 80 hotels, um, and we were focusing on hotels in which state has um, considerate, considerate uh, um, percentage of the ownership. In these cases, on the average, we can see that guests rate comfort and value for money on average less than eight, eight points. And this is really disturbing because everything less than eight is more kind of, from guest perspective, um, respected as potentially risky stay. So guests prefer eight plus. So when you look and you take, this is the average, and those dots are hotel properties that were analyzed. So looking at this, this is not one region, this is whole Slovenia, on which hotels are achieving average grades in very important components under eight. So this is really, really not only important, but really very dangerous situation. So, and here we see consistency. We see consistency with this. Okay, so KPIs are very consistent. This is strategic issue. And then we see that market really, that market really confirms this. But switching, switching from, from, from this and, and going a little step forward, um, Slovenia is, is, in terms of accessibility, yes, extremely nice road accessibility, but on the same side we have quite underperforming air accessibility. So in the year 2016, when all regional airports, being capital cities or being secondary cities, recorded growth, majority of them double-digit growth. At the same time, Ljubljana Airport achieved decrease in the total uh, volumes of, of passengers. Um, for instance, yeah. So this is, this is more or less kind of also potentially dangerous situation because as the region is growing, as the tourism volumes in Slovenia are growing, we can see that Ljubljana Airport is de decreasing with the with number of passengers. Moreover, the reason why we can see this happening is really when we compare regional airports, as you can see here, um, out of all capital cities in the region, Ljubljana is better than Podgorica and Sarajevo being the capital cities uh, in the region. Um, but moreover, Ljubljana also has one of the lowest number of air carriers flying to the airport. So we can see 10 of them as of 2016. Um, but, as you can see, only Trieste was weaker than that. So, um, yeah, it's really challenging situation for Ljubljana Airport in order to really find its position on the market. And this is not going to be easy because of when your competitors are as, as much stronger than you, but as you can see, even Salzburg being the secondary city in Ljubljana, very close to Munich Airport, very in between uh, Vienna, they are achieving 1.7 million uh, passengers per year. Um, and 
one probably one of the reason for that is, is, is really that Slovenia has very nice air, uh, road accessibility, which makes it quite quite um, intense with traffic. So we are coming actually to the situation where basic positioning of Slovenia, green, active, healthy, is also becoming full of CO2. So with this develop and with these traffic jams which, are, which have became actually the everyday situation on Slovenian roads, this is really threatening the basic positioning of Slovenian tourism. Um, coming to Bled, coming to Ljubljana, uh, yeah, very probably you will, you will be stuck in a traffic jam. Uh, so, yeah, here is huge conflict with what we, what we want and how we want that market see us and what we actually deliver in, in the reality. Um, the next step is, is actually looking at the, at the seasonality. So, seasonality-wise, um, Ljubljana, uh, Ljubljana, I was Ljubljana, but uh, Slovenia in summer months um, achieve, let's say, uh, a little bit more than 50% of all, of all um, overnights on the, on the year level. So, looking and comparing Slovenia with selected countries um, here, like Hungary, like Austria, Malta, or Spain, we can see that seasonality is not as critical as it is in some other countries like Croatia, where seasonality is much more worse than, than it is in, in, in Slovenia. So, what we see also that there are positive uh, changes in, in seasonality pattern in the um, autumn period, in the spring period, which is actually suggesting that there is improving uh, seasonality and improving uh, traffic um, equally, not only during summer months, which is okay. Um, but, looking at Slovenian destinations, uh, we can see that there is actually high concentration of business around just 10 destinations in Slovenia. So, top 10 destinations account for more than 60% of all tourism traffic in Slovenia, suggesting that there is a real vulnerability of Slovenian tourism sector in terms of if something happens in one or two destinations, then we will have strong impact on the total numbers that we will achieve. Um, moreover, is the actual the fact that we have to ask ourselves out of these 10 destinations, how many of them really have strong tourism vision? Do we know for all of these 10 most important Slovenian destinations, what and how they want to develop tourism over the next 10 years. I think that there are just few of them on this map, not to say one, but maybe few of them, that know what and how to develop tourism over the next years. We also analyzed how Slovenia stands in relation to tourism transactions, hotel transactions. So, hotels being sold or bought by different uh, investors. So, on the regional level, we compared Austria, Croatia, Hungary, Italy, Montenegro and Slovenia. And on that level, from 2012 to 2016, we saw 220 transactions, being single, portfolio, single or portfolio transactions. Um, out of this, we compared Slovenia with the average uh, of what is the average price per hotel room on the regional level. And we can see that in Slovenia it's a little bit less than 72,000 euros per hotel key. And on the regional level it's 173,000 euros per hotel key. So here we see almost 60% lower price per hotel key in hotel transaction compared to the region. So it's, yeah, considerably. And when we translate these 220 transactions into the financial terms, we come to total transactions of uh, more than 6 billion euros. And in that total amount, Slovenia is participating only with 1% of all transactions because of lower achieved price. So, we can say that Slovenia is not existing 
on the global market of hotel buyers. <clears throat> but we also wanted to see how Slovenia stands uh, in terms of hotel development. So one thing is, yes, hotel, de hotel transactions. On the other side, we wanted to see what is the hotel pipeline of Slovenia at the moment um, compared to, to Austria and compared to Croatia being immediate neighbors. So in, in Austria, we see more than 8,000 rooms in the pipeline being in the process under construction or uh, advanced phase of planning. Uh, total total volumes of investments are uh, above 1.2 billion euros. In Croatia, we see almost 3,000 hotel keys uh, in the pipeline, with total um, value of the investments a little bit more, around 60, 600 million dollars, with some of resorts happening like Four Seasons, um, Belvedere in Dubrovnik Hotel Park in, in Rovin, uh, which is going to be probably also put on the global brand market. Um, but at the same time, in Slovenia, we couldn't find, since the Interconti opened, um, we really couldn't identify strong hotel pipeline in Slovenia. Maybe you will be able to help us. So, What's also happening in the region is that, that the region is, is significantly improving in terms of and fighting for the guests, in terms of uh, modernization, in, in terms of um, invention and innovation. Um, in Croatia we see all kinds of different segments of tourism infrastructure happening, like uh, sweet water aquarium in Karlovac, like a lot of interactive museums opening up, like visitor centers popping up out, or water parks and theme parks uh, hitting the market over the last three years. Um, so all of this is actually happening in, in Croatia. In Austria, we see a lot of innovations in terms of sophisticated tourism interpretation, sophisticated presentation of regional uh, specifics, of regional cuisine and gastronomy, uh, visitor centers and entertainment centers. In Italy, the same story with really innovative museums with really innovative interpretation of Italian cuisine and entertainment facilities as well. So, at the same time, um, in Slovenia, we, during the strategy, we have really identified that there is low level of innovation in, within, the, within the sector in terms of tourism infrastructure. And tourism infrastructure really um, looking towards better days in terms of financing, in terms of modernization and, 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 and really competitive position on the market. Um, and so the region in a nutshell and, and coming to, to, to the end of the presentation is, can be actually grouped as it follows. So we have on one side, we have Italy, we have Austria being highly competitive countries. Okay, so yes, they are strong, they are powerful and they know it. Um, and they, on the market, they are fighting with focusing on innovations. And on the other, on the other hand, uh, in terms of hospitality industry, they are fighting with yielding of prices. So they are putting up the prices up because they are innovative and they are providing value for money, okay? Um, we have Hungary, which is kind of follower on the regional scale, so no, they're not leading the pack. Italy and Austria are, but Hungary is following in its own dynamics. So they are doing the best they can, and they are quite averagely successful in this. Croatia, on the other hand, has huge challenge in terms of monoproduct issue. So Sun and Beach being the leading product with around 80% of all tourism traffic in Croatia is huge strategic challenge of, of Croatian tourism industry. But, on the other hand, compare also very much in line with monoproduct challenge, we see that in Croatia there is a big problem in terms of challenge between volume and quality. So, with this year, uh, Croatia uh, will be, depending on the methodology, around 1 million, 100 uh, million overnights. So this is a huge number. Uh, and there is a real threat in Croatian case that 
these huge numbers could influence negatively the quality of the tourism product. So when we look at the region, we see that this is actually a highly competitive, highly competitive region. And Slovenia position, okay, yes. Um, in terms of competitiveness, not so good. A lot of things didn't happen over the last 20 years in Slovenian hotel market and, and tourism market, but this can also be a strength. Since with this strategy, we have identified really, let's say, shortcuts to cutting through complexity of tourism development and really jumping over some organic steps in terms of development and really enabling Slovenian tourism maybe to go fast forward in some particular segments. So in front of Slovenia, nevertheless, all the challenges that we have seen, uh, we really see that with smart moves, Slovenian tourism industry can take several shortcuts in order to speed up the process and catch up with the regional competitors. And how this can be done? In order to conclude, there are a few most important uh, strategical uh, tools that we have uh, identified. One of them is being state hotel portfolio restructuring. We have high value greenfield hotel and resort investment market offering being the toolkit for international investors looking at a Slovenia to invest. We have regional master planning in order to be, to harmonize development of four clusters with a national strategy. Tourism incentive scheme being the state driven uh, support for hotel and tourism investors in terms of uh, loans, in terms of interest rates, in terms of payoff period which is also happening also in Austria, also in Croatia, and these kind of incentives are actually the engine for strong investment, which is obviously needed in Slovenia, as we see zero hotel rooms in the pipeline. Um, and in the end, but not the least, is actually management and legislative system improvement where we really need, Slovenia really needs to strongly change several areas within the legisl legislative area and also to improve the capacity um, of the management system in terms of product development, in terms of, um, in terms of managing the whole system. Um, I, in order to conclude, I would really say that nevertheless all of the strategic challenges that we have seen and that we have showed on the, on the, on the slides, we are positive and we are very much looking forward to see Slovenia growing in the next in the next five, six years during the, during the strategy period and that we really believe in Slovenian tourism, nevertheless, what we have seen now. Thank you very much. Hvala, Siniša. Zdaj pa se pogledamo, kako bo današnji dan po teh uvodnih nagovorih in te uvodni prezentacije potekal. Na meniju imamo v bistvu dve glavni jedi z omestnim kosilom, dva keynote speakerja, Marka in Nika, ki mu potem sledi en tak zanimiv panel, kombinacija predstavitev pogovora, to bojo kar zanimive stvari. Potem popovdan, po coffee breaku, bomo pa dejansko preselili to paralelno dogajanje, ki se dogaja v Kranski gori v hotelu Kompas, Ta zaključen del sem, tako da boste videli in faneliste in sliša boste, kaj se dogaja, kaj v bistvu hekaton sploh je, pa kakšne stvari smo zdaj mi vsi dobili iz tega. Tam je zdaj le že 24 ur 18 ekip, to je posnetek od večeri začer, dela na enih zadevah.